I hope you're all doing well this morning. I'm uh, Dr. Pielitz, and I've got a couple slides here I'd like to present to you. I think first, uh, the Director of Global Education would like to say something. Hello, how are you? Hi, this is Mei-Chi Pielitz, uh, Mrs. Pielitz, uh, my students call me, and some of them call me mom, <laughs> some of them call me Omi, uh, but Anyway, so I am very happy to be here today to see you. Well, I cannot see you, but you can see me and to, to meet you and talk to you and share some information about American higher education and also our university, Mississippi College. Now, first we will have Dr. Pilots um, talking to you about uh, what is the definition of best value university? And um, sometimes you hear people talk about best value, best value here and there, but what does that mean, best value? So he is going to sh um, share that with you. And, and also another uh, caveat is that um, Dr. Pilots is my husband and both of us work at Mississippi College and uh, we have been married for, believe it or not, 42 years. <laughs> of course, when I got married really young, right? <laughs> so anyway, so Dr. Pilots has been um, professors for last uh, two that more than two decades, um, decades, and then he um, has uh, uh, been working, he, well, he worked in about eight different American universities. Um, including University of Cincinnati and um, UC Davis, UCLA, Case Western University in Ohio, Loyola University in Chicago, um, University of Mississippi Medical Center, um, etc. and now Mississippi College. So he um, has a vast knowledge of uh, U.S. higher education. Um, and he does a lot of research, and so he published about more than 200 papers, and, um, and so he, but he has a heart for international students. Both of us, we have a passion for international students. So every time when I go around uh, the world um, recruiting students, and if he has time, uh, if it's a spring break, he will come along with me and to meet precious students from all over the world and, and really enhance our life um, through because of your presence, because of knowing you. So thank you so much. And so he is going to share with you today, right now, um, uh, about the definition of best value university. All right, take it over, Dr. Pilots. Okay, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to show off my t-shirt here. She says MC Global Education. Very proud of our international students. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see me quite correctly here. It seems like it's a very white background, but uh, I will try and speak clearly. Uh, this is the first time we've tried to make this presentation. So, uh, Mrs. Pielitz will be timing me somehow because I don't have a watch and I'm really not sure uh, how long I may ramble. But the idea of, uh, <clears throat> of a best value is an interesting one in terms of education uh, because it is often equated in terms of how much it costs and uh, what you get out of it. And uh, education is uh, related to wisdom and instruction and knowledge and the right way of living and making wise decisions. And so those things are extremely valuable. In fact, much more valuable than uh, you can easily put a price tag on. But, uh, you know, we live in a world of uh, the internet and a world of marketing and um, putting spin on all sorts of uh, things we call value. And uh, one of those things you'll find on the internet is uh, classification of universities um, under the category called best value. 
So it's an intriguing term uh, because uh, when you think of, uh, when I think of the universities I've attended, I don't think of them exactly uh, based on um, how much it cost me to go there or what I got out of them. I often think of them more like, uh, well, like perhaps you think of uh, your country or your neighborhood or your family. You think of them with affection and with a, a, a certain amount of pride and, and a bonding. And it's, it's really um, sort of a, a discredit to your, your family and your neighborhood to say you put a price tag on them. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, this is what is, is uh, being done when uh, you go on the internet and you search uh, and you think about a uh, best value. So uh, the other thing about going on the internet, of course, is that there's uh, quite a variety of different websites that you can go to, all claiming to be, uh, to be the right one to go to. Um, many of them uh, I've personally never heard of, but I think most of us have heard of the ones that I'm going to talk about today, which are um, the U.S. News and World Report, uh, a very uh, well-established journal that does um, highly qualified uh, reviews of many things, and also the U.S. Department of Education, which is a an unbiased um, resource that you can go to online to compare universities, but they don't rank them. So, that, uh, so what I did was I, I went to these these two sites, and only these two because I think they're the uh, the proper ones to go to, the most most credentialed. But I, I I should also say that I also went to all the others, and I typed in best value university in uh, Google search. And uh, what I came up with was, uh, for the most part, um, there's little agreement as to which universities are the best value. And they get into nuances like what type of university you're, you're uh, wanting to, to a value. Now, in the case of our, our university uh, in the United States, we're a, we're a full four-year university that offers bachelor's, master's, and some PhD degrees. Uh, we're a private university, and we're a Christian university. So, uh, and we're also in, in, in the state of Mississippi, in the region of the south part of the United States. And so uh, you can look at um, the rankings in each of those categories. And you can also look at it nationally. But my thinking is, is that you, since you are, um, you are international students, that your interest should be uh, comparing our university or any university based on the national ranking. You, uh, I don't think that you've particularly uh, made the, the decision that you want to go to a Christian university, for instance, or that you want to go to a private university or that you want to go to a state university, or that you want to go to a regional university. I think that you're probably at the stage where you're trying to look at all the universities and to go to the best one that you can. So, so, so therefore, the proper way to rank is to see how a particular university, in this case, our university, compares to all the national universities that offer four-year full comprehensive programs. So, so that's what I, I'm going to show you. And it may or may not impress you because I, I'm a scientist. I really don't, I do care that you come here. I hope that you come here, but uh, I care more about, about uh, truth and, um, and accuracy in reporting. And I absolutely hate fake news. I hate, uh, I hate uh, people who market and, and, uh, and in in a try and and say that there is relativism, there is absolute truth, and I'm going to present you some of that from uh, from these two sources: CNN, uh, I'm sorry, U.S. News and World Report, and the U.S. Department of Education. So here we go. So um, this 
this the first slide shows the national rankings um, in looking here at Mississippi College undergraduate programs 2020 US News and World Report and so our university comes out ranked in, in the range of uh, 293 to 381 in overall universities nationally. That is across all of the, the uh, different disciplines. Uh, this is out of approximately 4,000 total universities in the United States in this category. So essentially, anything in the top 400 is in the top 10% of universities in the United States in these categories. So um, we're, we're not number one. We're not the top 10 in the whole United States, but we're in the top 10% because we're rated, depending on the discipline, in the range of 293 to 381 nationally. And you can compare this to the other, the other universities for your particular area of, of a study. We're number three in the top performance on social mo mobility. So what that, what that means is if, if you apply for, um, for what's called Pell Grants, which are for underprivileged, low-income families, and you track only those people, you find uh, you, you can rank the universities based on how their students come out and whether they advance in their the income of their social economic strata and we're number 466 to 4504 in a business programs nationally and actually we're quite proud to be in the the top 10 percent now if you look at our, our graduate programs we're in the range of 148 to 194 in the best law schools nationally if you look at the, uh, our fine arts programs in the graduate school level, we're number 210 nationally. And if you look at our graduate school physician assistant programs, which is something I'm involved in as a professor of biology, we're rated number 126 amongst the graduate school physician assistant programs nationally. So again, this is the best colleges in the US, uh, in the US according to the US News and World Report in 2020. And this is the ranking of Mississippi College. However, all of these um, online services also have a category called best value. So I look for our university in the best value category of US News and World Report and I found it was not listed. So I'm not sure why it was not, not, not listed. It looks like they, uh, they only list the top 299 and uh, perhaps we didn't make the cutoff, uh, but this is a relatively new category and uh, it requires an algorithm. It requires a lot of, uh, of input as to what determines the best value of a university. Uh, and all of these uh, different online services do their algorithms differently. They are complicated algorithms, and they generally take into account uh, the cost of the university, uh, which is not just the tuition and, and the fees, and it also includes uh, the cost of housing, food, and uh, other, um, other ancillary costs. Um, as well as the amount of scholarships and the grants that the students can get to offset those costs. And then it also takes into account uh, things like uh, graduation rate and also the, um, the financial value uh, that is the salaries, the average salaries that students get in their, their, their are different fields after graduation and it compares them. So, uh, not being able to find this in the U.S. News and World Report for, for, for Mississippi College, I turn to uh, the most reliable source that is available, and it's online. You can go in and search it out too, 
which is the U.S. Department of Education. And this is a little bit of a complicated slide that I had downloaded from a comparison that they, that they did. Uh, the U.S. Department of Education does not rank uh, the universities. Uh, however, you can uh, look them up. You can find all kinds of uh, interesting um, parameters, uh, interesting facts and figures about each one, and you can compare them. So I chose to compare Mississippi College with the number one best value university in the country, which is uh, this year was rated as Princeton University. And I com also compared uh, Mississippi College to another university which falls in the same category. That is a, uh, a private Christian university, in this case, a Catholic university called DePaul University, which is about the same size. Uh, it, however, is located in Chicago and Mississippi College is in Clinton, Mississippi. And uh, in, this, uh, in this slide and the subsequent slide, I show uh, the three main categories that um, all of the algorithms use to calculate best value. And you can compare uh, for yourself so again, um, as, as, this, as this slide shows, um, Mississippi College was not listed in the U.S. News report uh, as a, one of the, the best value universities. Prince is number one and DePaul is number 59. So the first category that the Department of Agriculture, uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Education came up with here in this uh, online uh, source is the average annual cost, which takes into account the tuition, the living costs, the books, uh, the average grants and, 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 uh, and scholarships as the students can get. And um, actually, Mrs. Peelis is going to tell you what, what those amounts are from MC. Uh, but the, the amount is, 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 is as shown here. And you can see Princeton is number one because or largely because it actually only costs half as much as it, uh, per year as it does to go to Mississippi College. However, if you look at DePaul U University, the cost of DePaul University is twice as much as the cost at Mississippi College. So the reason that Princeton University is so low, by the way, is not that it has low tuition. In fact, it has uh, amongst the highest tuitions in the United States, somewhere, uh, I'm not sure, around maybe $60,000 per year. However, the reason it is low is because they are well endowed and they, they, they accept highly, uh, very, few, very few students, frankly, uh, and uh, they, they give a large number of scholarships to those students. So if you're fortunate enough to get into Princeton University, Good for you. That that that's that's what this that's what this this slide says. However, if you're uh, interested in other universities, uh, I believe that you'll also see that uh, that um, the value of the best value here beyond Princeton University is going to be Mississippi College. So it costs more to go to, to DePaul University. It costs twice as much. Now we'll look at the graduation rates, which is the other key uh, factor that goes into all the algorithms of all the websites that determine best value. So again, uh, Princeton University is very, very strong. It has a 98% graduation rate and uh, DePaul, at, it comes in, in, in at the 68% and Mississippi College comes at the 54%. Moving along, however, to the next slide, which is the key slide that I want to point out in my last slide, is the issue of salary after completing your degree. So what's listed here is the average salary in the first year of students who get their bachelor's degree from Mississippi College, and it ranges depending on the discipline that you study, 
from $19,400 to $49,800. If you graduate from Princeton University, the range is $47,900 to $63,000. And if you graduate from DePaul University, the range is $17,000 up to $60,200. So the main thing I would like to point out here is that despite the fact that DePaul University is rated number 59 out of 4,000 universities in the United States for best value. The range of, of, uh, of uh, salaries at completing the, the deg deg degree is um, overlapping completely with the salaries that our students at Mississippi College get when they graduate. So in terms of, uh, if you uh, re reflect on this, what that means, because Mississippi College costs half as much, is that you get the same salary for half as much money if you go to Mississippi College as you do to go to DePaul U University. And you do get a higher salary if you go to Princeton University. However, the salaries are still overlapping a bit because the low, they're, they're, low end is exceeded by the high end salary of the students graduating from Mississippi College. So to say that Mississippi College is outside the range of a best value uh, is incredulous to somebody like me who's been uh, teaching at, uh, at the six uh, U.S. medical schools and universities and graduate from other places in the United States that I love love uh, dearly also, also, but you can see that the value is very good uh, from going and getting a degree at Mississippi College. Moreover, I, I suppose you also know that there are different costs of living in the United States. So um, the cost of living is very low in Mississippi. The cost of living in the city of Chicago where DePaul University exists is very high. So if you're earning $20,000 in Mississippi after you graduate, or you're earning $20,000 in Chicago after you, you graduate, well, the value is uh, about 30% about, about more. You, that is, you, you, can, you can buy more, you can, you can have a bigger house, more, a larger apartment, uh, a, a, a better car, all those types of things for living in Mississippi than you can in Chicago or in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, where Princeton is based. So those are some things you need to, 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 to think about. But again, the main reason you're going to a university is to get wisdom and to get knowledge, to get understanding. Uh, and to take those um, attributes and skills out into the world and to make the world a better place. And they are more precious the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter three very well, uh, that they're more precious than rubies and much fine gold. To be able to have wisdom and, and knowledge that we all value, we all need for the rest of our, our, our life and to go to a good university and to get them is more precious than uh, these, these slides would indicate. So uh, although I see uh, the need to explain all, all these things further, I think it's time I turn this over to my wonderful wife and educator, Mechi Felitz. Hello. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Felitz. And um, uh, Dr. Felitz uh, has a lot of students that they always hang around with him and uh, he is, is a very dedicated professor. Um, on weekends, sometimes he even uh, go to the campus and help students, if international students. We have quite a few Indian students on our campus too. And so he will go there and uh, if they need tutoring and help and also um, he help them with uh, lab. He does a lot of research and a lot of researchers and uh, publish a lot of papers. So he, he has a 
heart for our international students and domestic students as well too. All right, so now um, since you get a general idea of what what's the definition of uh, best value university, um, I uh, would like to uh, come to, um, uh, let me see, uh, go to my slides, if I can find my slides here. Uh, okay, so we are going to go to um, my slides. Okay, so now um, you can see uh, that's the first slide. Okay, you are very welcome to Mississippi College. And this is a picture of one of our dorms. We have many dorms. We have 2,000 students uh, live on a dorm. We have a total um, population of students, about 5,000. And some people, when, when I ask students, do you know where Mississippi is? They say, oh, maybe very cold or I was like, no, it's, it's quite warm. It's similar to India. And I have visited India before, um, um, about six different cities I visited. And um, so I know the, the, the climate in India and the wonderful people in India. Um, so now Mississippi is in a kind of like a, in deep south, we, we uh, put it. And uh, it's on the western border um, is uh, Mississippi River. You can see zigzag border. And then um, the southern border is the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, Clinton is, um, is only 20 minutes car drive, um, drive from uh, the, the capital of Jackson. And uh, so um, it, it's, it's 20, 30 minutes from the Mississippi River and two and a half hours from the beach. And Mississippi, we uh, call it, we have Mississippi Southern um, Hospitality. People in Mississippi, they're very, very friendly. And uh, we, Dr. Pilitz and I, we have lived here for 27 years. We really enjoy being here. Um, it's just so much to explore. And a lot of famous people came out of uh, Mississippi. Actually, Mississippi College, we have four governors graduate from Mississippi College. Uh, it's a very reputable university. Um, so this is a campus view here. Uh, campus, we have, uh, um, the, uh, we have two campuses. This is the main campus. Uh, we have, uh, and we also have other uh, campuses. Um, so we, our university was founded in 18, 27 and and then 1830 became came out uh, became a college before it was an academy and um, so um, we kept this name Mississippi College is because it was a very old university just like in the United States many old universities they start with college like Harvard College Yale College and even now, um, you know, William Mary College, Dartmouth College, and a lot of these Ivy League universities, the uh, Boston College, they still keep the name college because it's for the namesake and also for the history's sake. And uh, so that's why, although we are four year comprehensive university, we have seven different schools, but we still keep the name college and it is not community college like some people thought that this is a community college or um, in the you know, in the united states when people talk about school they usually use talk about university they either use university or they use um, college or they use school which school do you go to which college do you go to and very seldom people ask which university do you go to but that's common um, Okay, and also, oh, you know what? I just realized that my um, cord is not plugged in. Uh, so before my battery runs out, um, I better plug it in. <laughs> okay, so I am back. All right, so Mississippi uh, is, uh, Mississippi College is the largest private university. We have 80 
plus different areas of undergraduate studies and 50 areas of graduate studies. And like I said, uh, we founded in 1826 and um, we are the oldest university in Mississippi. And we have about 5,100 students in total, about 150 international students from 38 different countries. And we also, now this is back in um, best value in the South. Um, and we were ranked best value in the South not like Dr. Uh, Pilas was saying that we we're not ranked nation nationally, but uh, um, in regional, we are um, 32 um, best value university in a regional university in the South and 12 in the, in the best value school in the South. Um, so we are ranked number two in best values in Mississippi based on the cost and the graduation rates. And now when Dr. Pilas was showing the graduation rate, it looks kind of low um, it, um, in comparison. But what, what it is, is um, when students come and um, to get a Mississippi College diploma, it is very, very, um, it is it's not easy because uh, the courses are very rigorous and um, so you really have to be serious uh, to study and then once you get it that diploma like Dr. Pila said you get good paid um, job uh, jobs and all kinds of um, opportunities I actually have a, a, a Pumba um, the sisters, they, they went to um, Mississippi College and they came back from New Jersey. They got a job in New Jersey and they came back and they told me that uh, at her workplace one time when she sent in a submit a project, the um, her boss was was actually was really impressed. It's like, where did you graduate? She said, Mississippi College. He said, well, that must be a very good school because your project surpass all your colleagues projects and she said well we always our professors that's the way our professors ask us to do so uh, we used to doing this you know come up with a, a very good um, project so um, so that 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 kind of explained explained and um, so um, I, I just want to quickly move on and because of the time um, so I mentioned that uh, in 2017, we were rate, uh, rated number one among the state four-year universities. Um, like I said, we have several, uh, two campuses. Main campus is in Clinton, and then we also have a campus, law school campus is in uh, the capital, Jackson. Uh, we also have horse uh, equestrian program, horse program, fishing, play shooting, club sports, and uh, we have a lot of 325-acre uh, um, cross-country track. So like I mentioned before, we have seven different schools, School of Business, School of uh, Christian Studies and Arts, School of Education, Humanities and Social Science, School of Law, Nursing, and Science and Mathematics. And um, our business school um, is uh, um, AACSB, AACSB accredited business school. So AACSB, that means they put us on top 5% of the world business school. And um, so we have just tremendous, great programs. Actually, even during um, this year, this year, 2020, our um, MBA graduates uh, were able, still able to find jobs um, in the market because when, when they went for interview and the way they uh, presented themselves, the, the, the mind skills and their, their um, skill sets impressed the employer. So they got hired. Um, so and um, so we have accounting um, and, and an MBA with accounting concentration, finance, 
and uh, Bachelor of Finance, MBA, Finance Concentration, Business uh, Administration, and a General MBA. Okay, we also have MIS, uh, um, Bachelor, and also MBA, MIS, um, and also combination of uh, the, the Doctor of Law and MBA combination. Um, so it, 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 this is our biggest uh, school on campus, uh, which is a school of business. And then also we have School of Christian Studies and Arts. And we have Art Studio Arts, Graphic Design, Interior Design. And uh, um, for those students who want to go into Christian Studies, they have uh, Christian Studies for them and communication, public relations, corporate communication. We have a lot of international students major in communication. Um, public relations and corporate communication is very popular uh, field among international students. And after they graduated, they also get very good job in this area um, and music performance and so on. And, and then we have the School of Education. Now, School of Education, we have um, kinesiology. Now, kinesiology is very popular among many of my Indian students. They came here mainly for um, the applied exercise physiology. Uh, a lot of them, they get uh, physical therapy undergraduate degree, and they come over here and they get their applied exercise physiology, which is a STEM program. And uh, so after they graduated, they, they get three years OPT and they were able to um, also get a license uh, to do physical therapy. We have several of our Indian students doing that right now. And also another popular um, field among Indian students is psychology and counseling. Now counseling, you know, you have marriage and family counseling. Uh, addiction counseling, mental health counseling, and so on. And uh, we even offer a doctorate, a uh, doctorate of uh, professional counseling, we call it DPC. Now that, that DPC is uh, online, right now it's an online uh, doctor program. Um, it's not a face-to-face uh, -face, um, program. Um, and uh, I want to say that um, to, uh, when I was talking about business school, I just want to remind you that some of you might be interested um, in, well, not high school students, but if you know of anybody who, who are in professional field and they would like to get an MBA, we also offer online MBA program too. Um, so uh, the counseling right now, our Indian students, um, they the, the five girls I know they graduated, they all got really good jobs um, for, to start out for their OPT. And um, so um, I'm very proud of them. And they, they really like this field, uh, very popular. Um, and also education leadership. Uh, we have an education leadership non-licensure for international students. You don't have to worry about license and then you can get a master degree or you can also get a doctor degree in education leadership, but they will probably want, want you to have teaching experience. So that's more uh, for um, uh, older students, not for 12th grade students that we're talking to today, right? Okay, and uh, we have School of Humanities and Social Sciences, English and Philosophy. Um, and also uh, history, political science, a lot of, now this is a political science actually is a precursor to our law school. Um, in the United States, law school is different from, from in law school in your country. Um, in your country, you can just go to college and then major in law, then you come out as a lawyer. But in the United States, if you want to be a lawyer, you first you have to, have undergraduate education, and then you go to law school. And um, so we also have um, international trade, international studies, and, and uh, TESO, EL certificate, and social study, social work, very popular uh, among international students as well. 
and School of Law, as I mentioned, um, that's mostly it's for graduate students. Um, School of Nursing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, School of Nursing, we have um, also international students are very interested in School of Nursing. They come in uh, as undergraduate students and after the second year you take a test and once you pass the test then you go to third year, fourth year, then you go into your major. And now our, with our nursing school uh, is very, very uh, famous uh, in this area. Uh, even students, even before they graduate, we already had um, hospitals knocking on our doors and, and wanting our students. Um, I remember one time I went to my doctor and a, his nurse came. Uh, it was a very young looking nurse, but very professional. I have never seen a, such a professional nurse. Um, uh, doing all the work and ask me questions. It sounds just like a doctor. So, and then, and then I talked to the doctor. I said, your nurse is just very impressive. And, and, but she looks so young. And so he said, yeah, yeah. She just graduated this past May um, from Mississippi College. But I usually don't hire anybody who does not have working experience, but um, with the exception of uh, students graduated from Mississippi College because they go through very, very rigorous um, curriculum. And, and so once they graduate, they already hit the ground and running. So the, um, we also offer a master too, uh, a bachelor and master in nursing. And School of Science and Mathematics, that, that's biology, that's where Dr. Pilitz is currently uh, working as a professor. And uh, we have, um, we also have a lot of Indian students in, in biology too. Um, biology Needy, she, she's in biology and uh, several, um, Kavitha and all the different uh, students there in biology. And um, so if you are interested in going to research later on, or you want to be interested in going to graduate school and someday become professor. Um, a lot of students, they take, they work on Bachelor of Science in Biological Science. And, and we also offer a master. And we have a one year Master of Science for, um, in biology. And that's to prepare students to go to medical science and go into medical schools. And chemistry, biochemistry, very renowned, long history of excellence. Uh, a lot of wonderful, uh, very impressive professors, uh, staff in uh, chemistry and biochemistry. And uh, computer science and physics and, and uh, electrical engineering, these are all very, very good um, departments. Um, we just like um, other chemistry and biochemistry and biology departments, they're staffed with very reputable uh, professors. Um, so computer science, I just give you a quick example. We have uh, this uh, um, student who called me, um, that was before COVID-19 happened. So he said that he got it right after he graduated from uh, Mississippi College. He went to Silicon Valley in California to work. And uh, so one time they would do, he said he was under a lot of stress, uh, stress, a lot of pressure because all his colleagues, they're all from uh, either Ivy League schools or big name schools and, and so on. And he just came from, you know, the south of from Mississippi College. So he was working uh, under a lot of stress. Uh, and, but one time they had a project they had, a, uh, they had a glitch and nobody could solve the problem of this particular um, issue. And he was the only one who solved the problem. And that brought um, the, his boss to him. And he was, his boss was very impressed. He said, well, how did you know to do this? He said, well, this is how I learned at Mississippi College. I was a computer science major, and that's what our professor uh, taught us. And he said, what school? Is it Mississippi College? And he said the same thing. He said, oh, it must be a very good school. That's amazing that you, because we start the computer science start with from the, from the very basic 
to the, the elaborate uh, sciences. Um, so um, we don't we don't just uh, teach you, you know, with with just uh, how to design apps and and all that, you know, from the very beginning. Um, so it's uh, that's why. And and also we have uh, several companies. They come to us and ask our professors and said we want to hire your students. Uh, we don't want to hire the other school uh, students because they couldn't. When when we hire them, they they look really good. The transcript looks really good, A's and B's and all that. But then when it comes to um, the, uh, doing the actual work, then we still have to train them. So that that's uh, but with Mississippi College students, they can hit the ground and running, and they don't have to go through additional training. Mathematics and next and also physician assistant uh, studies. That that's a short term. Um, that's a graduate program, but that um, is kind of uh, uh, a short medical school. So medical school usually in the United States takes five years and physician assistant takes two and a half years, but you in, in the fast track uh, curriculum. So you learn just as much as a medical school students um, would learn, but in a shorter time and, um, and of course less tuition right and but they can still prescribe medicine they can still see patients and i have uh several doctors that, that i owe that uh, several physicians that i go to and they are actually physician assistants and and they're very capable just like doctors and so yeah medical school preparation our undergraduate we have a pre-med program uh, in biology department so students who are in pre-med uh, program they get to go to um, medical school very easily because our pre-med our pre-med program uh, we are i think the the only undergraduate program that actually has a cadaver's lab and that cadaver's lab usually is for medical school students you know, the human growth anatomy you use cadavers but we also provide our undergraduate students with that uh, that uh, with cadaver we have usually uh, each semester you will have about 22 uh, cadavers for students to uh, dissect and to operate on and um, and so our pre-med program usually the third year and fourth year of college um, that students will um, take medical school classes, histology, you know, uh, human growth anatomy, and so on. Um, so, it, our um, uh, pre-med program is is so popular that we have long waiting lists. A lot of people like to get into um, our program. And now we just come to um, talk about uh, tuition and fees. And uh, tuition and fees, um, I'll just quickly go over. Um, now, the tuition is for undergraduate students a year. That covers a year uh, tuition fees, living expenses, room and board, insurance books, uh, everything all together um, is 32258 now the average um, U.S. university's um, tuition uh, for international students usually is about thirty-five thousand to fifty thousand um, average, and ours is eighteen thousand two hundred tuition, and then plus the fee is nineteen thousand three hundred eight. And um, so, but with that thirty-two thousand two hundred fifty-eight, we also give students um, scholarship. So. Undergraduate students, when you come in, you get 4,000 uh, scholarship the first year. So you use 4,000 and then subtract by um, subtract from 32,258. Uh, I mean, you were talking about 28,000, a little bit over 28,000 a year. That covers everything. And is, so that's why you get a really good value out of that. And um, so, People will say, well, what about after the first year? Do we still get scholarship? Yes, after the first year, you will get um, 
that we called merit-based scholarship. So after the first year, and then you have some grades accumulated, and then we, we want to see your GPA. We want to see, so 50%, um, we, we, we look at 50% of uh, your uh, portfolio should be in uh, GPA, and then 40% of community service and see whether you, you know, you just don't study and, but not thinking of serving other people. And uh, so we, we, we like to see how our students um, are doing yeah, from second year, third year, fourth year, whether they involved in community service and 10% uh, is uh, in your essay rating, uh, writing. So this is how, so the second year, third year, and fourth year, you can get scholarship as high as 5,000 or more. Um, so what I would advise undergraduate students, you know, 12th grade students, um, if you want to apply uh, to Mississippi College fall of 2021, during this time, um, maybe we don't require SAT or ACT to be admitted to uh, Mississippi College. But if you want to get more scholarship, I would encourage you to, um, to uh, take SAT and um, exam, and then you, if you have a high score, and then you get additional scholarship. Um, so um, now we, this is uh, uh, the required documents. The undergraduate students, you know, high school transcript, high school diploma, bank statement, and language proficiency, um, IELTS, 5.5, um, that's it's okay, but most of our students, um, they come in with 6.0, especially our Indian students, uh, and TOEFL 69, GPA 2.5, and a lot of, most of our students also come in with 3.0, but uh, we set it at uh, GPA 2.5, um, so some students say, well, what about um, uh, right now, you know, a lot of these testing centers are not open. Well, then we also can take Duolingo. Uh, Duolingo, um, you can uh, actually here I, I, on the bottom, uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic, international students are allowed to take the uh, Duolingo uh, 95. Actually, for undergraduate students, we ask for 90. Um, so if you get, you can score 90 in your uh, Duolingo, um, then you can, you can come, you, you will meet the requirement of language proficiency. Um, so that's all we need for undergraduate students. And, uh, all right, so, and um, career opportunities. We um, help uh, our international students apply for work. Uh, authorization. Our office helps uh, international students. So during the four years, you can even do uh, internship. We call it CPT. And after you graduate, you do OPT, uh, optional practical training. And then CPT is curriculum practical training. And so if you, um, if every year we have, we host a, a job fair this year, 2020, our job fair, uh, we had more than 90 organizations um, came. They, they, want to, they want to hire students from Mississippi College. And um, also our campus career services, and they, I would encourage you uh, to go and talk to them. And they said they, they'd love uh, students to, to have students visit their office because they can help you prepare resume, they can help you find jobs, op job opportunities, and uh, who knows, sometimes students go there and just say, oh, actually today somebody just uh, contact us, we have a job offer here, and then why don't you call them? And so um, our students have the, the uh, job, um, the internship opportunity. And I would encourage students to do that. And also when students come to Mississippi College, <clears throat> we also always um, ask students to have both major and minor. So this way, when you graduate, you have more opportunities. Um, we have two sons. Our, our sons, when they are in college, they, they will have a major and minor. And our oldest son, he even, they're all from Mississippi. And um, they even have, um, my oldest son had two majors and two minors. And 
after he graduated, he got a lot of job job offers and because of these uh, different um, fields that he was uh, he, that he had major and minor. He uh, his major is uh, international studies and economics, and the minor is uh, business uh, and Chinese language. So he was able to get uh, a lot of opportunities. So well, our office is Office of Global Education. When you come, we'll take care of you. And I'm the director of uh, the Office of Global Education. So I make sure that you will be well taken care of. And um, anytime you have any issues, come to me, call me, and uh, I'm here to help out. Because I was an international student one, uh, many decades ago, and I knew how hard it was for international students to adapt to an environment and also academic environment that I'm not familiar with. And every Monday, we will receive a report. And um, this is, uh, we call early alert. So the report will, tells, uh, will tell us um, the students, whether they have, <clears throat> excuse me, academic problems or emotional problems or, and they, a lot of absentees or, um, it's all in the report with code, different codes, like 99 indicates something, 66 or, or 77. So once we receive the uh, report, my staff will contact the student, or email the student, ask the student to come to the office, and then we will talk to the students, find out how we can help out, uh, the students. If the students have difficulty understanding the lecture, or, um, then we'll find a tutor at our expense students don't have to pay and if the tutor can help the students and we like to help the students in the beginning of the semester not after midterm and uh, we just uh, uh, this is what we believe that international students coming over here so far away from home and you know oftentimes sometimes you know, they get homesick they miss home or they're not used to the, the academic environment and we are here to, to set up a safety net to catch them if, if they fall, if they um, have difficulties. Um, so this is what we are doing. And, uh, and also we have, when, when stu uh, students come, international students come, we arrange host family for each one of the students, if students want. Um, host family. So you don't live with the host family, you live on campus, um, but the host family will be your American family and they, they have to sign a contract. We vet them very carefully. So they will come and then visit our students uh, on a regular basis and, uh, and many times they will invite students to, to their homes. And, um, and when, whenever we have any activities on campus, the host family will come we'll, and with their host students. So we call this program uh, Adopt the Student Program. And so basically they become very, very close. And um, so that's something that I did not have. And I really wish I had that when I was a student. So that's something that, that I, I started this program and it has been very, very successful. And also uh, we also find a language partner conversation partner for each uh, international students. And we also have a very good writing center. If you have difficulty writing uh, academic papers, um, you go to writing center. Our writing centers um, uh, helpers are really, really helpful. So, uh, so our international students just couldn't say enough about our writing center as well. So we are here to help you. And uh, so if you have any questions, um, you're very welcome to uh, chat with me, ask me questions. Um, so I, um, we have questions here. Um, yes, so Mike, you have yes. some questions in the q &A. It would be nice if you could answer those queries. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, do you want me to answer live right now? Yeah, yeah, you can just talk about it, like question one, question two, etc. Okay. All right, question one, how does the US news ranking rankings come up with their ranking list? Are they an accurate measure of university quality? Um, I would say that a lot of times 
um, this uh, U.S. ranking, like Dr. Pila said, you know, they, they see how much endowment that comes in uh, to the university, like Princeton, got a lot of endowments. Uh, and they have famous movie stars graduate from um, uh, Princeton's and then, you know, they get a lot of endowments. So they take all these different things into considerations too. As far as the, the um, university, the, whether it's accurate measure of university quality is, it's up to the individual. It, I would not say that it's not accurate, but I would not say that it's 100% accurate because uh, a lot of um, the students that graduate from Mississippi College that I usually ask them, I reach out to the alumni and get their feedback. And the, the feedback that I got, it just majority of them, that they just very, very favorable. And they said they made a big difference um, in their life. So. I would say that um, whether, you know, when you choose universities, you need to see whether this university is the best fit for you or not. Um, and uh, it, because uh, 12, uh, 12th grade students, teenagers or the college freshmen, when you go to a university, you are still teenager, you're still young. It's very important that you go to a university that, that that you um, professors will teach you, not TA will teach you. And then you, you can have close relationship with professors and, and a professor can guide you. Now that is something that I always feel that for undergraduate students, um, this is very important quality, but um, usually with this kind of like US news ranking thing, they don't take this into consideration. There are a lot of things they don't take into consideration. Okay. Now the second question, what is the difference between national and regional ranking? Now the difference is just national, you know, you have 4,000 universities and the regional you have, you know, you, you, you divide it as south and south, southeast and north and west and east. So that's, that's a different ranking. But regional ranking, you have to look at the university whether they have the accreditation you have every university should have regional accreditation like mississippi college we are accredited by SACS, s-a-c-s um, so that is the you if if a university is not accredited uh, by re regional accreditation organization then um, then you know, i i wouldn't choose those universities uh, which majors are the salary statistics for and so this, the salary statistics, what they did, what Dr. Pilitz gave was a average, just across the board, okay? Um, so there, there's not a specific uh, salary, uh, uh, so a specific majors, okay? Um, so, and also the salary is an average salary. It's not some of the, you know, some people they get, you know, six uh, uh, figure, salary and some gets you know the five figure is but what he saw what he gave you was a average salary um, do university mean research and college mean no research in general context um, well university you can uh, can be divided by university uh, you can research focus university and and also so university can be research focused university and, uh, and not research but generally speaking yeah um, the college usually um, means that uh, they focus more on teaching and more teaching than uh, research but at mississippi college like my husband he does a lot of research and uh, students will do research with him so that is, um, so it's not a set in stone uh, classification. Yeah, but in the past, overall, yeah, that's, that's true, yes. Uh, can you please provide a breakdown of tuition fee, housing and meal plan? I think I showed you in my uh, uh, um, previous slides um, that I can go back and then you can see the previous slides. Um, what is the scholarship uh, criteria. Uh, like I said before, the scholarship, we, all the students, when you first come in, once you are enrolled, then you will get 
four thousand dollars a year. Okay, so two thousand a semester. But um, then, then the second year, third year, fourth year, we also offer merit-based scholarship. It's not automatic; you have to apply. But the first year, once you're enrolled, all enrolled student, international students, will receive four thousand dollars. So you will knock out four thousand from the thirty-two. And um, so, and, but the criteria, scholarship criteria, if, like I also mentioned, if you would like to get more scholarship, uh, I would encourage you to take an SAT and then get a, um, although we don't require SAT to be admitted to, to, to get a $4,000, but if you want to get more than $4,000, you can take an SAT and then you can get like um, academic scholarship. And also we have Dean Scholarship, we have uh, a Presidential Scholarship. Um, so I would encourage you to do that. Um, otherwise, you can, you just apply and then once you get enrolled and uh, you get accepted, you'll get 4,000 automatically. Um, I would like to learn about housing meal plans for under, undergraduate students. Now housing and meal, they come together. So once you live on campus, you, you have to have a meal plan. So the meal plans usually cover 19 meals a week and even cover weekend. And, and the, the housing, I always encourage our 12th grade, I mean, the freshmen coming into university to stay on campus. Uh, the reason is, first of all, you're still young. And then when you stay on campus, we can keep uh, closer, uh, we, we can take care of you easily. Um, and also you can involve in school's activities um, easily. If you live off campus, you have, um, uh, you know, you don't know what's going on on campus. And thirdly, it's most important, it is mandatory the first year. <laughs> you need to stay on campus. The first year, because we, we want to make sure that you are well taken care of. And uh, anytime you need anything, and our office is right there to help you. And uh, so, um, so housing, but when you live on campus, the housing and meals, they usually are together. Now, um, after the first year, um, if you are more familiar um, with, we, we encourage students to stay on campus for at least three years. And, but uh, depending on your age, if you come in, uh, to the university, you're already 20 years old. And um, so you stay one year and then you, once you reach uh, 21, then you can uh, leave, you can live on off campus. Uh, but we do have a lot of campuses. I mean, we, we do have a lot of uh, apartments and housing close to campus too and off campus. Can you uh, please share about campus safety? Thank you for asking that. Our campus is extremely safe. Um, it, first of all, it's in Clinton, it's a college town. So um, it is beautiful and it's safe. And also secondly, we have a campus police, uh, I mean, it's campus um, security and they patrol the campus all the time. And also um, the, the city police station um, is also one block from the campus. So they also patrol, but but actually, we don't have we don't have like crazy people showing up on campus or because this is not a um, party school. Now this is a my husband said before that it is a Christian university. Christian university doesn't mean that students come in they have to be Christians. We have students from um, all faiths a lot of uh, Saudi Arabian students and Indian students. We have all different faces. And, uh, um, but um, but the, the fact that it's a Christian uh, university is we have a high moral standard. So um, we don't allow students to uh, party on campus, like crazy party. You can have gatherings, you know, party and all that, but um, no drinking, no smoking uh, on campus. And uh, even you get drunk off campus and you come back to the dorm and one of the students was sent home. So we are, uh, the campus is very safe. Um, we very seldom, we, we just very seldom we hear um, uh, any 
we don't have, I mean, I work in my office, sometimes work until 12 o'clock midnight, and uh, I can walk around campus and um, yeah, I don't have to worry about it. It's a very, very safe campus. Yeah. Would it be possible to share details on class, uh, class uh, faculty ratio? Of course. Thank you for asking that I, I missed. Um, the student and uh, professor's ratio is one to fifth, uh, I mean, uh, 15 to one. So one teacher and one professor, 15 students, usually is one to 15 ratio. So we have small classes. So our professors know everybody's name. My husband, he, he will have three classes and each class, then he will, he will know all the students' names. So after they graduate, they come, they send email to him and say, can you please write a recommendation letter for me and all that. And he knew who they were and he could write. And usually his recommendation letters are so good, so detailed the students use that recommendation letters to land in medical school and graduate school and, and so on. So our professors know, I know my international students' names too. And um, because we, we interact with them and uh, we don't, they, they're not just a number to us. And uh, so, uh, so that's why my Saudi students will call me Omi. That means in, in Arabic, it means my mother. <laughs> and, um, and so they always call me that I'm their American mother. And, uh, um, and my Chinese students will call me mama and then my Indian students will call me mom. <laughs> and then we have, I, I, I just have, I enjoy, I think that's the greatest title I can ever get. I'm so honored when students just come and just call me and say, hi, mom, I have this issue. <laughs> Do you have any solutions? <laughs> so um, we are here for our students. So yeah, anytime if you need anything. And then one, uh, another question, can you share your application requirements for freshmen? Yeah, I think I shared before. You just, we need your transcript of 12 uh, and from uh, your high school transcript and um, your um, language proficiency uh, score, uh, IELTS or TOEFL or Duolingo. And, and then uh, we uh, also uh, uh, need your uh, bank statement, financial support, financial statement. And, um, and basically that, that's it. For undergraduate students, it's very easy. And usually the, your application come to me directly. You go online, and, and the online the, uh, website is apply.mc.edu slash start. Um, I didn't put it on the uh, PowerPoint is because we just start a new CRM system. And uh, so that's the new uh, application. Let me say it again is apply.mc.edu slash start and then you apply and then the application will come directly to me and i approve it then you you're accepted and that's it and uh um so you know you can mention that you were one of the students attending the webinar you know kunar and and you can mention that on your application usually we always ask how did you hear about mississippi college and uh so you can do that um, um and application requirement, that, that's it. I make the decision and then you are in. And um, so uh, we also will send you a, a, a phone card and, and that, um, so you can use that to activate your phone. And uh, so that uh, um, you come here, you, you know, we, we want to make sure that you have a smooth transaction. And before you come, we'll do an online orientation with you and kind of, and I love to talk to you, to your parents too, uh, because I'm a parent and, and, and my husband, parent, we, so any parent, we, we welcome you to, to contact me and uh, um, I, you'll, you'll get my email address, um, mcpilots at mc, and Kunal has my uh, email address. You can contact me and ask me all kinds of questions. I'm always available, yeah. And, and say, would, be would it be possible to share more information about your current international undergraduate students? Yes, our current undergraduate um, international students 
um, they, I don't know what you want to, um, I, I probably should send the, some testimonials of our uh, students. Uh, next time, or maybe I can send it over to you. Um, students, when they come here, I tell you, one of the students told me, okay, he, he, he graduated, it took me, oh, I have so many stories, <laughs> but I have limited time, but I just give you a very short recap. This student came here, Mississippi College for, and he, in the beginning, he didn't study very hard, and it took, took him five years to graduate. But after he graduated, but toward the end, I had to discipline him. I said, now your family spend money, uh, to send you here. You got to shape up. Okay. So, um, so I, I would make time for him that he will come to my office every Friday afternoon. We'll go over what he learned in the, in, uh, during the week. And, uh, and so, uh, I spent a lot of time with him. And, uh, so he actually graduated with two, uh, uh one uh, major in, uh, uh, business administration and a minor in computer science. And he, his family, his parents were so happy and they sent me emails uh, thanking me and they came to his graduation. And, and, and after he graduated, he got a really good job back home. And then his company sent him back to the United States to San Francisco for, uh, to get his MBA. So he contacted me, he said, um, uh, I would like to come back and visit you. And uh, I said, okay, come, come back. I'll, I'll treat you for dinner. So he said, well, no, I'm making money now. I'll treat you. So, so we got together and he told me, he said, you know, I just want you to know one day, if I were a parent, I will never send my child to a big city school. And because there's all kinds of people there and, 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 uh, our children at and, a and young age, tender age um, of you know, 18, 19, and uh, 20, they, um, they are very impressionable and they can learn you know, bad things really fast and depending on the, the crowd they hang out with. And, but my parents sent me to Mississippi College. Mississippi College, these five years, well, he, did, he, he didn't, because he didn't study hard, so it took him five years, but usually it's four years. He said, during these five years, I learned so much. And, and then you guys and uh, professors and you and spend so much time on me and cultivate me, cultivate. So, so I did not become a crazy person and did not go astray. And so if I were a parent, if I send my son and daughter to San Francisco, for instance, like where I am right now, my goodness, I, I, I just wouldn't know what will happen because the minute I land in San Francisco, he said, I know that I'm in San Francisco is when I smell marijuana everywhere, I know I'm in San Francisco. <laughs> so he said, it is just, um, the environment is so different and undergraduate years, you need to send kids to a school that is not too big, is not too small, too big for the student, get lost in the, in the crowd. Too small, they offer limited programs. But school like Mississippi College, medium school, and but at the same time, we don't let any students fall through the cracks. And any, any student, domestic student, international students, and under my uh, watch, we, we, um, we don't let students fall through the cracks student have problem they call me they have my cell phone number and they reach out to me and um so i am here for them um so that's that's uh, our current international undergraduate students um how we take care of them um what are the popular majors and the minors in mississippi college good questions too uh, all of your questions are very very good um popular majors uh, I can tell you uh, for uh, undergraduate student, undergraduate pro, uh, majors. Okay, um, we have M, uh, uh, we have a business administration, um, business school, very popular. Many international students come uh, major in business, and then they they major business, and then they can like this student I just told uh, told you, he major in business and minor in computer science, and. Um, or we have uh, students major in um, the popular um, ones are uh, also uh, the computer science, 
okay, and electrical engineering and uh, popular among uh, Indian students and Chinese students and uh, Saudi students. Um, uh, so, and then um, we have um, the, let me, uh, let me just go back to the, uh, uh, my slides. I guess, again, I go back to my slides. Uh, uh, oh, I, um, the slides I cannot go back to roll. Oh yeah, here, yes, I did. Um, so the school, um, so we have these, uh, okay, so um, business and, and also uh, nursing, also biology, mm -hmm. chemistry, and uh, biochemistry, um, yeah, accounting, very popular. Um, many of our students have got accounting major and they find very good uh, job in, in this area. Uh, finance is also very popular. Um, and then graphic design, uh, interior design, very popular. Um, and uh, public relation, uh, corporate communication, uh, that's very popular and then um, um, kinesiology exercise science and then pre we have a pre physical therapy and um, exercise science sport man uh, management you know physical therapy yeah pre physical therapy um, that's very popular uh, and then counseling is more popular among uh, graduate students and um, and then uh, the Another one is international uh, studies, um, uh, social science, international studies, and, and also international trade. Um, you can do double major language, foreign language, plus international trade, international studies, uh, or minor in uh, TESOL uh, certificate. You can teach English. Um, yeah, social work is very popular. And, um, Nursing, very popular among, in, uh, because it's a STEM program, very popular among international students. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, biology, chemistry, computer science, and all these STEM programs. Uh, mathematics, yeah, very popular among Asian students. Um, so these are the, the popular uh, majors and minors. You can mix and match and see which, which ones you like. Uh, these are the ones that, and then also I just quickly show you the tuition fees again. You can take a, a picture of this, a screenshot of uh, whatever, but um, we, the tuition fees, um, the breakdown tuition fees is 19,308. Um, tuition itself is 18,200. And then living expenses, room and board, if that means living in the dormitory and also having 19 meals a week is a year. These are all yearly charged, um, two semesters, um, two long semesters. So 10,950, that's including food and uh, lodging, the dormitory, and then insurance and books together, and it's through $2,000. And so these are the breakdowns. Um, so you, you got your breakdown. Um, if I miss any other questions, oh, uh, application, I already mentioned that, GPA, yeah. I think yeah. you've answered all the questions, Mai Chi. I think it has been Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's Thank good, you. that's good. Can you see me? Uh, no. Can you see okay, now? I can see you now. Okay, okay wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's that's really nice. I think are there any other questions? Let me just check. No, I think you've answered that. Uh, yeah, they asked questions. So thank you so much. Really good questions. Really good audience. I wish I can see uh, everybody here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, you so much, and, you know? and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk to these. Um, the, the, high school counselors, the, you, high school counselors, you're the gatekeepers, very important people, VIPs. Thank you. <laughs> and, yeah, in, in affecting students and, and also the parents. Bless your hearts. You are there to, to, to watch out, you, you, you know, to guide your 
sons and daughters. Um, yeah, it's not easy nowadays being parents. And you have a lot, to, a lot of challenges, but that's why we are here to help you. Uh, absolutely. Be parents. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. To the audience, I know it's very late in the evening, so thank you so much. Uh, 12th grade students, parents, guidance counselors, excellent questions. Uh, we truly appreciate your engagement of such high level, especially when it's so late in the evening. Um, yeah. Please join me in saying thank you to Miss Mai Chi. Uh, uh, she has really uh, put on a terrific show and a program and uh, the information was uh, nothing but in-depth and attention to detail. So uh, Mai Chi, thank you so much for your kind time. My pleasure. And uh, support in joining us. We really, truly appreciate it. And uh, we sincerely look forward to keeping in touch with you to all the students and parents and guidance counselors. Uh, just a gentle reminder, this session is recorded. So it will be shared with your schools and the surrounding schools. So uh, students from your school, other students who were not able to attend this evening uh, because of some other schedule constraints, they can view this uh, at the comfort of their home uh, once, they, uh, once they like to learn about the session topic. Uh, about best value U.S. universities, and of course, uh, to learn about Mississippi College and uh, be in touch uh, for future engagement directly with Ms. Mai Chi. So, uh, Ms. Mai Chi, thank you so much for your kind time. I thank know it was so early much. in the morning. Uh, I can see the namaste, so namaste from us. Namaste, namaste. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Pilets as well for joining us. Uh, really, you. some very unique perspectives that we didn't get to hear earlier on. And uh, wish you uh, a wonderful day. Look forward to keeping in touch with you. And to all the attendees, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much. And uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaste. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take, Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.